long labor and that will be postponed. And also we would like to extend the first public input session to 30 minutes and we'll need a motion for that as well. Second. All in favor? Larson, I'm from North Berwick. Madam Chairwoman, Honored Board, thank you for hearing my input. I will address three topics. Firstly, the hiring practices of NSAT 60. Secondly, the arts and humanities. And finally, logic. Hiring practices first. Today is the 21st of March, Women's History Month, and the year is 2024. I emphasize that because twice you have discussed whether this district should hire one sex above the other rather than the best person for the job. That attitude is not just outdated and illegal, but ill-fitting and unbecoming for your stations as directors of a public institution. This is the 21st century. Half of my students are women, and they cannot be served by the attitude that they don't deserve a fair shot at a career simply because of their gender. Women are in the workforce, and we are here to stay. Arts and Humanities. The story of Troy begins like this. Sing to me news of the rage of Achilles. Our oldest stories were music. Imagine ancient Rome, but without sculpture or architecture. What's the museum of fine art without paintings? What are the Olympics without athletes? What's your commute or your workout routine if you don't have your favorite radio station or your music? In other words, the arts sustain us and add great joy to our lives. They also give us careers as painters, musicians, furniture makers, website designers, and more. If you cut arts and phys ed, you stunned our students' opportunities to participate in the rich world that ties humanity together, knowing themselves deeply and participating in the history of art. So I urge you to not cut among the specialists who develop the nascent skills of our youngest artists and athletes. Lastly, logic. A common mistake, pardon me, is the false dichotomy. If A is not the answer, then it has to be B. The problem is there's sometimes a third answer, and that's C. This is a tough budget season, and it's tempting to say, if we don't cut the arts, we cut something else. But there's a third option, and that is not to cut anything at all. I beg you, honored board, find the courage to ask our citizens to invest in the most valuable things that our towns have, and that's our students, our kids. In the best of worlds, you are batting for them, for the students. 
Our district only spends about 15,000 per student per year. Maine State averages around 17. Given how little we spend, our students perform a lot better than you might expect, and that's due to amazing educators and administrators that work tirelessly on a skinny budget to improve the chances and lives of our students. Look, everybody knows you can't improve test scores and student outcome if you cut services and increase class size. So I implore you to bravely ask for the funds we need before you decide the kids aren't worth it. Again, you're asking for the students whom you serve first, and they deserve a board that will stand out for them. The worst that can happen is that you have to go back and make some cuts. But please consider this logical truth. If you don't ask, you don't get the funds at all. Thank you. Hello. Um, I wanted to start by just wishing uh, a good evening to the board and also to our um, district administrative team. Um, I know that uh, you guys have been working really hard and um, a lot has been asked of you um, this budget season in particular. Can I will in a moment. Absolutely. Let's go ahead. My name is John Paul, and I'm a former graduate of Nova High School. Uh, I'm a current uh, parent of two children in the district right here. And I have a wife who's also a teacher in the district. Um, John, where are you from? From North Berwick. And I'm a selectman in North Berwick as well. Um, and I've been an educational technician and teacher in the district for the last two decades. And I graduated with uh, a lot of people, and I certainly know a lot of people in this room. Um, North Berwick uh, and the uh, greater MSA 60 school community is and has always been my home, and I hope um, that it will continue to be. Um, we all have a unique story, and I think it's important to remember that we all have a unique story. Um, I'll share just a little bit of mine. Um, one side of my family escaped the Russian and Eastern European pogroms at the turn of the century, immigrating to New York City, uh, becoming citizens of this country, working hard and living there um, for two generations before moving to Sanford, Maine. The other side of my family, the Halls, um, my mom is uh, where I get my last name from. Um, they came to this uh, country of 500 different nations uh, in 1640, um, to Dover, and in 1760, two brothers, uh, William Hall, uh, moved to North Berwick. Um, they bought or acquired, I'm not sure how, 3,000 acres, which is now Beach Ridge area of North Berwick, um, and we still have 140 acres in the original farms. Um, I can go across my town at any point in time and show my children nine generations of halls that have lived in North Berwick. Um, I can also go to New York City and I can talk about the persecution of the Jewish side of my family um, and how they had to leave with nothing um, except their lives. I've attended a lot of board meetings in the past. And I have not recently, but uh, in the last couple of months, I've felt compelled to attend some school board meetings uh, because of the stuff that I've been hearing said at school board meetings. 20 by, seconds. By school board members. Since I only have 20 seconds, I will jump right to three things. Um, one is misogyny, and just so that we all have a common understanding of language. Misogyny is a Greek word. I mean, uh, being derived from uh, hatred of women, and it's an aversion or prejudice towards women. I have heard, on multiple occasions, misogynistic statements by members of this school board. The other one is a xenophobia. John. I will, um, John is not, sorry. an aversion or hostility to disdain for or fear of foreigners, peoples, 
of differences, different cultures, or strangers of the school board. And I hope that you will respect the second public input time. Thank you. kids who attend school in this district, the wife of the school resource officer for the high school, the daughter to Sheila Jordan, of whom this stage is named for, um, and also is the building, working as the building's library for well until she passed away. I'm a graduate of Noble High School, now an employee of this district. I've lived in North Warwick most of my life. I have worked in education for 17 years, and the first 15 years as a high school English teacher. I'm here today to speak about the necessity for mental health professionals, including school social workers and school counselors, and the role they play in our schools. Today's student is not the same student I used to teach 17 years ago. Today's student comes with trauma, housing instability, separated parents, foster homes, food insecurity, learning disabilities, emotional disturbances, and many other barriers that stand in the way of those students getting an education. My job and the job of all the other schools, social workers, and school counselors in this district is to break down those barriers to help our students gain access to that education. Social workers and counselors provide a safe space for students to get their needs met when there is no other safe spaces for them. Sometimes those needs can be as simple as access to food, which our schools provide for every student. However, sometimes those needs are far more complicated and require more time than what a classroom teacher can offer. If you walk into any classroom in any of our buildings, you will find a myriad of students with different abilities, backgrounds, experiences, home lives, and resiliency levels. We already know that not every student learns the same way, and because of that, there are laws to grant every child in this country access to an equal education. With that in mind, how is a child that can't sleep because of past trauma expected to access that education? How is the teenager who is taking care of younger siblings going to access it? How is the middle school schooler worried about losing their housing going to do it? That is where we step in and allow those kids the opportunities they deserve. You ask what school counselors and social workers do? In one week, a school counselor could meet with over 100 students between scheduled meetings, unscheduled meetings, and groups. An IEP social worker might attend five hour and a half to two hour long IEP meetings after doing observations and collecting data on those students all week. We screen for suicide ideation and self-harm at all grade levels and in all buildings because we are the professionals trained to do so. That is today's student. School counselors and school social workers do all of this and more so that our students can be their most successful selves during each school day. We are here for the students and the families, just like you are. I trust that every person in this room is here today because they care about our students want what is best for them, and we'll do whatever it takes to make sure they get the best. Let us remember we'll, as we move forward. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Charles Glomo, resident of North Berwick. Um, now, I spent 12 years teaching culinary arts at York County Community College, and in my time there, I could get an idea of what group of school students came from. And my best students, one of the schools that came from was this one right here, and thanks to all of these great <laughs> teachers behind, behind me. The cuts you're considering here will pull the rug out from under that. Math and literacy coaches are vital. It's one of the biggest uh, obstacles to students going into the schools. Currently now, I work in the workforce development end of the community colleges, and I've heard people come up and say, kids don't want to work. Kids do want to work. The problem is, for every person, 10 people that retire, we only have seven taking their place. The cuts you're talking about, are going to impede these kids' abilities to get the jobs we need in this economy, to get the jobs we need to move forward as a state, 
get the jobs to pay the taxes, but further support the school. It's a spiral, a downward spiral, you're talking about putting the school on. We have to, as responsible adults, just suck it up and do the right thing and see that our kids are properly educated and keep doing the great job these people are doing. Thank you. My name is Andrea Tiberio. I live in Lebanon. Um, I have a sixth grader that now attends the Noble Middle School. Um, when trying to figure out what I wanted to say to you today, somebody just told me, tell your story. So I'm going to give you a very abridged version of our story. Our child has been in this district since he was a kindergartner, and I'd like to offer you some insight into how some of the positions that you are considering eliminating from our school have impacted his educational journey. We came into this district in kindergarten with an IEP that he obtained through CDS during preschool. From day one, our child required OT services, support from school social workers, support of ed techs to get through his day. Even with this support, he still struggled profoundly in the mainstream setting. In first grade, he was moved into a self-contained classroom where he needed further support and was almost always one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two with -on -one. an ed tech. I'm sorry, I'm probably gonna get emotional. He slowly transitioned into the mainstream setting with continued support from an ed tech. Starting with specials with an emphasis on music, this class specifically provided him a place to feel included, share a passion, and connect with his peers through the love of an art, something that he had always struggled with. Over time, we increased his time in the mainstream setting, all while continuing to have support from an ed tech. There's a theme here. Having an ed tech with him provided him a safe person that knew his cues, knew our plan, and could remind him of his strategies and support him throughout his day. Eventually, he developed the skills needed to be successful in the mainstream classroom with minimal support. This was after years of work for all involved. Over the years, we attended countless IEP meetings, which I don't have to tell you are challenging enough to navigate on your own, let alone without someone coordinating these meetings tracking changes to an IEP, it would be next to impossible to keep it all straight. These meetings are often highly emotional, and without someone in that position, things would be missed. We have had many discussions with principals, some of who are in this room tonight, the director and assistant director of the special ed department and his teachers to talk about options and what might be the next best step for our child. I am more than proud to say that now he has been discharged from his IEP and is a full-time mainstream student but I can say without any hesitation that he would not be where he is now if it wasn't for the support of his teachers, the ed techs, the IEP coordinators, the social workers, the principals, the assistant special ed director, and the special ed directors, all of the support staff in the Lebanon schools and now the middle school. I can say without certainty this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for that support. Cutting any of these positions would be detrimental to any child that needs specialized instructions services or extra support to be successful in the school setting and would directly affect a chance of future success stories like ours. I don't know the answer of how to solve the budget problem we're facing, but I do know that removing these positions of frontline staff and the people responsible for meeting child's individualized needs are not the right choice. Thank you. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you everything that my daughter went through prior to her adoption, 
but I can tell you that if you endured half of what my daughter has in her short life, you would need extra support and care as well. There are many students like my daughter with ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, who are part of the Noble District. It is just as important that we support students with special needs as students in the general population. Having the Mary Heard School in our district makes it possible for our daughter to have an education suited for her needs within the district. This is an advantage to our family by not having to have her travel long distances for the education she needs. It's also an advantage to MSAB 60 that they do not need to pay for an out of district placement for students who cannot be successful in the regular classroom. Before Mary Heard, Kimmy was lucky enough to be part of the Noble Flex program. From Kimmy's point of view, she just needed a different environment to learn in. The pressure of a large high school, especially when you're figuring out who you are, was just overwhelming. It wasn't a fit. She loved her teachers, but she could not avoid the peer pressure. This experience at Noble Flex was night and day for Kimmy compared to the high school. The curriculum was exciting, hands-on, student-centered, and engaging. The topics they learned about were timely and relevant, such as learning about what's happening in the Ukraine. They also did passion projects, which allowed Kimmy to bring a structured learning framework to her love of animals. I think the flexibility that virtual learning offers is a huge plus for a variety of learners. I wish this program were available through grade 12, and I certainly believe it would be a huge loss to our district if it were not funded. Having the option to have such an innovative model program in our town is really fantastic for me as a parent. But I also feel this type of learning is the wave of the future. The learning coaches are taking all of the best ideas and the most relevant technology that was acquired during the pandemic and remixing it in a learning environment in a student-centered way. Both Mary Heard Academy and Noble Flex have been lifesavers for our family, and I mean that literally, not figuratively. And that comment extends to the talented, caring, hardworking guidance and social work staff of our district as well. As an educator on the front lines, I can tell you that each and every cut that we make to our budget has a ripple effect. We must focus on the students and their well-being, even if it does not mean, even, even if it does mean that taxpayers like me have to dig a bit deeper to fund these important programs. Thank you for taking the time to hear my thoughts, and thank you for all you do for the students of our district. Hi, I'm Greg Kinnear. I'm from Berwick. I have a 12-year-old son and a sixth grader in the Flex program. I'm also the father of last year's Noble High School valedictorian. Um, we got into the Flex program from a different angle than I think most people did. My wife works cardiopulmonary rehab. She's the director of a program down at Mass. And she works with the most at-risk people. So during the pandemic, we were looking for an alternative. And in fourth grade, my son did a program with Mrs. Campbell that was wonderful, and then we learned about the Flex program. So now he's done it for two years, and <laughs> it's worked out very well. Not once did we send COVID to my wife's client, and not once did them having it bring it to the school. So that was a victory in and of itself. But the best thing is, I have a 12-year-old son who loves school, and that's a, that's a miracle. He can't wait to get up and get, in, get on line in the morning and see his classes. He can't wait to go into school. The woman who just spoke talked talk about the passion projects. That was a big thing. The, the, the myriad of techniques that these teachers use to reach all of these kids. They experience things, they talk about things. Yes, they read, and yeah, they sit and do math homework and, and those kinds of things but they get a lot of variety. I am a little bit afraid that if we take my son and put him in a more streamlined system, in the, what we call normal system, or I'm not sure what label is used these days, he's gonna be poured to tears. And he's not going to be excited about school. I, a few people have brought up, I just wanna reiterate, if you tell me that it's going to cost us all a little bit more to keep flex, by all means, I'll give you more money. I come from a background, I grew up in Northern Illinois, where we paid approximately four times the tax on homes that weren't nearly as valuable as what we have today. And we had no art, and we had no music, and we had no athletics, and we had holes in the roofs of the facilities that people wouldn't vote for a referendum to even fix them. I don't see that here. 
but I'll give you more money if it means giving more stuff to the kids. Absolutely. Especially, because I'm selfish, if you want to keep flex. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ozma Caston, and I am an Excel student in the fifth grade at the Milton School. For me and other students, Excel is not extra. It's my specialized education, and it is stimulating, and my experience with Excel has stimulated my deep love of learning. Last year, Ms. Sahibian retired, and the beginning of this year was very hard. At the beginning of the year, I did not have much Excel time, and as a result, for the first time in my life, I was disinterested in school. I didn't want to come to school, and I was just bored in the classroom, even though my amazing teacher, Mrs. Gollin, tried her best with her limited time to keep me engaged. But then in December, Mrs. Sahibian came back for that month, and after Christmas break, we got Mr. Robert. They are both such great teachers, and I feel lucky to be able to have learned from them both and still learn from Mr. Robert. The reason that individualized education is so important is because our class sizes have increased each year, and our teachers are just trying to keep up with all our different levels. All students deserve the right to learn in their grade, and if they already know some of what is being taught, it isn't fair for them to just wait around without also learning something. In my fifth grade class, I have a range of classmates, some of whom do not require special education while others of us do. One of my classmates can barely speak while one of my friends has autism and spends part of her time with a special teacher. I believe that schools where everyone's needs are met are an opportunity to learn from each other. Please support all the teachers and programs that have helped so many of us. Thank you.
Then my teachers talked to my parents, and they arranged for me to spend a little extra art time on Monday with Miss Johnson, the art teacher. It really affected everything, and I looked forward to it. It is exactly that type of individualized education that my parents are worried we could lose next year, and so am I. In 2024, we have been lucky enough to have Mr. Robert come out of retirement to teach Excel. He is an amazing teacher and really made me excited about a wide range of subjects, from pyramids to colonial America. I'm nearing the end of fourth grade, and it seems so strange to reflect back on the first three months of the year when I was so bored and angry that I was begging my parents to switch me to homeschool. It took a team of Mr. Robert, Ms. Johnson, Ms. Mossman, Ms. Ahagian, Ms. Bowie, Ms. Chemist, and Ms. Chemiston to get me where I am this year. I'm grateful to them and to all of you, for me and all the students at my school with special education. Thank you.
board members, administrators, town residents, and district uh, colleagues. Martin, please. Would oh, you I'm like getting to it. Hold on, I was just addressing you guys. Sorry. <laughs> my name is Tanya Noyce, and my family and I have been in Berwick resident for almost 14 years. My husband and I have three sons, two who have graduated from Noble High School and one who is currently in the eighth grade at Noble Flex. I work for MS 8060 and this marks my sixth school year within the district. At the Noten School, I hold a distinctive consolidated role as both the librarian and the STEAM specialist for 223 students. Both roles demand substantial dedication and time allocation to fulfill their duties effectively. I have a great deal of administrative tasks that ensure the library is well organized and functions properly. My non-instructional time is invaluable as I oversee the operations of two distinct classrooms, each involving a range of administrative duties. In the library, my responsibilities encompass creating lesson plans, managing book transactions, facilitating research for new acquisitions, organizing and processing books. Additionally, to ensure that the library runs smoothly, I issue and update library cards, oversee patron numbers, input data, and generate barcode labels. Moreover, librarians are tasked with ensuring they upkeep through repair books like recovering, gluing, and relabeling. To help ensure that the library looks its best, I coordinate and execute the book fairs that help raise money to upgrade the library. Recently, the STEAM program came under scrutiny, and I want to highlight its significance for students. STEAM represents science, technology, engineering, art, and math. STEAM nurtures critical thinking and problem-solving skills crucial for children to task life's challenges. It also promotes teamwork, encouraging students to collaborate, share ideas, engage in discussions, support viewpoints, and reach conclusions collectively. Class time constraints often hinder teachers <clears throat> from incorporating science into their lessons fully, making STEAM valuable for covering science standards efficiently. STEAM occupations are expanding at 24%, surpassing all other occupations growth rates, according to the U.S. Department of Commerce. So that indicates a promising future for the STEM education. As a STEAM teacher, I am responsible for making technology fun and accessible. And to do that, I teach the kids how to use coding programs to code robots, which helps inspire them to pursue tomorrow's coding opportunities. Currently, I am teaching the children the science of planting. 30 seconds, thank you. Thir oh, uh, 30 seconds, sorry. <laughs> Through hydroponics, <laughs> which helps the vegetables grow faster, thus consuming their attention. Through a grant, we are able to, attend, to obtain a 3D laser printer and that helps teach computer added drafting designs. When I'm not teaching STEAM, I have many administrative duties that entail pursuing grants, crafting lesson plans, exploring innovative teaching Time. approaches. <laughs> outrageous behavior, uh, but sometimes it is necessary to be firm and rein in that behavior. Tonight, I am here to speak for reining in foolishness. Over the past nine months that I've been watching, the school board dialogue and meetings has gotten so far out of whack and the notions that we're entertaining are so foolish that the normal business of keeping our schools running has been silent. Over and over, I have watched a few assume that they are speaking for the many. By continually inserting this foolishness, they're chipping away bit by bit at what is working in our schools and the work of the board itself. It is death by a thousand budget cuts. You have all been invited to go into the schools. Please, go. No one is spending your money irrationally. 
They are trying to offer a quality education to all of our students. In some cases, that may look very different from your school experience. Madam and maybe, Chair, we haven't addressed the board. I apologize. Yes, of course. I'll be glad to. I just said I will be glad to. No, we'll, we'll add that to my time. And there may be unfamiliar terms like ed tech, behavioral interventionalist, etc. And those are unfortunately the needs of our current student population. I would wager some of those complaining are grateful when they benefit someone in their family. This year alone, toilets are out of commission, septics fail, boilers on their last legs. This is not a money grab. And honestly, as a two full-time working parent household, I get it. We struggle every month. But this year, Netflix, Hulu, Disney, they all went up a bunch in price, down in service. And somehow, you are expected to make our schools perform better and better with less funding. It's foolishness. I'd rather have potholes on my road than watch our schools lose more good teachers. A comment I heard from a board member at one point was to me much too much, as it suggested that, quote, the problem comes when we water all the flowers, meaning students. Our modern society demands with laws that everyone is watered and treated with respect, dignity, and met at their level. This prior notion is callous, dangerous, and frankly illegal. It is not noble school board appropriate. Finally, I have also heard over and over board please. members mention constituents, referring to the town folk who elected them. This is both wrong and incorrect. To quote the Noble website, the board is an independent body charged with setting the policies for the district that the board believes are best for the education of our district's children. Your oath is to the students of this school district, Hi. not to the folks that elected you. If someone wants to serve constituents, they should run for a political office. Please remember your job, end the foolishness, Thank you, Mr. and propose a budget that does Thank you, Mr. 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 Thank you, Mr.
Thank you.
I see them working hard in a job that has to be emotionally and physically draining. They are needed. What kids did we take into consideration? What kids in this district's joys and safe spaces and our children's safety hold no value to, to you? Please rethink your decisions. Thank you. If you just look at our class load, you will see what appears to be free time in our schedule. I can assure you that every specialist in Newark Borough has worked really hard to fill these times to provide support to our students and staff. Because we are a small school, our resources to meet the needs of our students are also less. Being out of these buildings two days a week will impact what we are able to offer Newark Borough elementary students. We are often asked to support struggling students mentor and be a check-in person, and be an incentive for classes or individual students trying to meet academic and behavioral goals. Because we teach all of the students and are visible in our buildings every day now, these connections and relationships have already been built. As specialists, we use our knowledge and skills to provide early intervention to those needing additional help with fine and gross motor skills. We collaborate with classroom teachers and are a resource to them. We provide enrichment opportunities for students who have special interests that they would like to pursue. And we would provide support for social and emotional well-being of our students. We are encouraging you to please reconsider consolidating our jobs and keeping us in our North Borough community, using our specialized skills as a resource to better accommodate the needs of our students. Thank you. Thank you. Studio, we learn more than colors, painting, and drawing. Rather, we emphasize how to be a well-rounded learner. We learn to collaborate, make cross-curricular connections, innovate, and develop our personal interests and how to express them, all while learning how to be responsible for our school and the materials that we use. At North Berwick Elementary School, art extends beyond producing results, emphasizing instead the artistic process, how to develop an idea through all of the successes and setbacks there. The skills my students develop are applicable to all facets of their lives, both in and out of school. Should the positions between North Berwick and Ellis be consolidated, students across the district will lose, variety to, lose access to a variety of additional offerings, including but not limited to advanced art for third and fourth grade students, support for RTIB students, Noble Flex will lose their art teacher, Noble Virtual Pathway students will lose a mentor, fourth grade students will lose the ability to work on a yearbook design, and as the yearbook creator, lose the yearbook itself. Fine motor intervention for a variety of kindergarten, sorry, kindergarten and first grade students. I implore you to understand that these are the things that we do each and every day that make our students' days special. After all, isn't that what specials are for? Thank you.
I want to thank you for allowing us to present that Noble Flex. So without further ado, I introduce to you Noble Flex, where learning takes a whole new dimension. Our program is a fusion of innovation, tradition, and it's designed to empower our students in grades 5 through 8 through project-based learning. I want you to picture this. Three days a week, students embark on their educational journey from the comforts of their homes engaging in hands-on projects in independent assignments tailored to their pace and style. But that's just the beginning. Twice a week, our students come together at our unique yurt where the magic truly happens. Here, they immerse themselves in collaborative learning experiences that foster teamwork, community, and real-life connections. It's not just about the academics. It's about building relationships and developing essential skills. At Noble Flex, we understand that every student is unique, and that's why our learning coaches work so closely with our families in order to craft individualized plans that meet each student right where they are. With flexibility, engagement, and authenticity at its core, Noble Flex is shaping the future of education, one project at a time. My name is Amber O'Neill. I'm the director of Noble Flex and the social emotional learning coach. I've had the opportunity to be a part of Noble Flex for two years now. Good evening, my name is Sarah Abbott, and I am the ELA and Social Studies Learning Coach. I've been with the program for all three years. And my name is Robert Kendall, I am the Math and Science Learning Coach, and this is my first year at Noble Flex. Um, Project-based learning or PBL is like planting a seed watching it grow into a beautiful tree. Instead of just memorizing facts from textbooks, students dive into real-world challenges. Just like planting a seed, PBL begins with a question or a problem that students want to explore. Students then research, experiment, and collaborate with classmates, just like gardeners tending to their plants. Students see how their studies relate to things happening outside of school, like seeing how a tree grows and interacts with its environment. They have the freedom to explore different solutions to the problems at hand, just as gardeners might try different methods to help their plants grow. At the end of the project, students present their findings, reflect on their journey, and what they have accomplished, just like reaping the fruits of their labor. Through the vehicle of project-based learning, Noble Flex allows students to focus on building real-life skills while also immersing themselves in standard-based academics. The program offers flexibility, yes, but perhaps more importantly in this post-pandemic climate, it also puts a heavy emphasis on the social aspects 
of team building, collaboration, and community connection. This slide outlines some of the most important values of the Noble Flex family. It also provides a visual of some of the ways in which we have impacted and been impacted by our surrounding communities. <coughs> At NobleFlex, we learn math, science, reading, writing, social studies, computer programs, and health, and more. Everything you do at every other school. Our learning is rooted in the main learning results and common core standards. Our curriculum aligns with the subject area scope and sequences of the district. We look at the five through eight learning standards and integrate them into our work in, a, in an authentic way. Flex is not just about academics. As the employment landscape continues to evolve in this age of information, the skills that are most in demand are also evolving. And it is critical to our students and to our future that education addresses these changes. Noble Flex cultivates in students every skill from Forbes' list of most in demand workforce skills including critical thinking, digital literacy, <coughs> leadership, and collaboration. When we think about our goals and vision for Noble Flex, I think it's important to point out that since the pandemic, more students are school avoidant, meaning leaving families feeling hopeless and schools unprepared with a solution. Students who miss 18 or more days of school, or 10% of the school year, are marked as chronically absent. To provide some stats for you, in 2019, 16.8% of Maine students met this definition. This spiked to 31.5% in the 21-22 school year, the year when most schools resumed regular construction. In November, the rates in Maine for the 22-23 school year were released, showing a slight decrease to 27.3%. In our middle school alone, we are averaging about 20% of our students who are chronically absent. The topic of school avoidance is a conversation that needs to be spoken about. It is an unfortunate, but at this sustained, elevated rate, this issue may have significant staying power, and re-engaging students is likely to become more challenging. And it's also, to require, it's also going to require considerable resources. We want to be a resource. Let us be a resource and let us help students find the joy in learning again. We have seen it work, and that is why our students and families, past, present, and future, are our why. We have heard from several of our parents and even past students speaking during this public input, but we would now like to take a few moments of your time to allow some of our current students to be able to speak and tell their why. I'd like to welcome um, Ms. Noyes to come up and speak on behalf of her son for tonight. Noble Flex plays a crucial role in our community, holding significant values for our family since its establishment. Our son is unique, not particularly sporty, but eager to learn with a compassionate heart. Known as our internal optimist and peacemaker, he has a way of touching people's hearts. His appreciation for Noble Flex stems from various reasons, which I will highlight tonight. Firstly, he appreciates the flexibility of the hybrid schedule. Secondly, the inclusive atmosphere at Noble Flex, where students embrace each other's differences, creating an enriching learning environment. Lastly, his years at Noble Flex have shown him the joy of learning without disruptions. <clears throat> Unlike in traditional schools, where behavior issues often interrupt teaching. As a parent, it's tough to witness such struggles when you desire the best education for your child. 
As an educator, I understand and witness this frustration in my own classrooms. I, in a perfect world, I ideally wish for the opportunity for the Noble Flex to continue until graduation, providing a path to success for students who may face challenges in traditional settings. My husband and I extend our deepest gratitude to Amber O'Neill, Sarah Abbott, Rachel Putnam, who was there for two years as the math and science teacher, and Robert Kendall, who joined this year. My husband and I appreciate your dedication and support over the past three years. Your efforts have truly made a remarkable difference. You all are rock stars. So please consider for future students and families to keep this fantastic program running. Thank you.
thank you for sparing me a few minutes of your time. My name is Charlie Gilmore and I'm in the eighth grade. I'd like to preface this, preface this by saying that this is my first year that flex program and it was the best decision of my life, even though it was only for this year. Last year, in the seventh grade, I was being relentlessly bullied. I had death threats by people I had once thought were my friends and I was being sexually harassed. And as a result of this, my parents had to take me out of school and I did my work online for the remainder of the year. In January of 2023, my seventh grade teacher had recommended me the FLEX program. After applying and being accepted into the program and spending this past school year in Noble Flex, I can't express how much I love it. I would like to bring up how kind and accepting everyone here is first. I feel so supported by my peers and learning coaches alike that this is the best community I've been a part of. Not only is this community supportive, but it's also very welcoming. As I said, this is my first year here, so I was naturally very awkward, but I fit right in, and I was also treated as the same way as if I would have spent years here. Another part of this program, which is my personal favorite, is our learning coaches. They're the best teachers I could ask for. They support me and constantly check in on me. They have also have direct contact with my parents to support me in the best way they can. And they also, with our lessons, they make sure that everything we do is fun and engaging, so that everything we do is just like, I don't know what the word is. Uh, just so we don't get bored in class, because that's <laughs> one of the most important things, in my opinion, is being engaged with the lesson. Lastly, and the reason all of us are here, is to express why Noble Flex should keep its funding. Like most of us, we each have our own reasons, but here are some key thoughts that I, shot, th that I thought should be pointed out. For one, every one of my peers had had only positive thoughts to say about the program and say that has been the best schooling option for them. Some, including me, have felt like it has saved them. I'd also like to bring up that there are very good reasons why we're in the program in the first place, and if we would go back to public school, then it would have effectively been all for nothing. All in all, I'd like to thank you for your time and hope you take all of our letters into consideration.
slides for each of the board members. On the front, um, there are some QR codes for you to be able to see our work, as well as our Facebook page, which provides so many videos and pictures of things that we're doing, and our website, of course. I also want to invite you to please come to our yurt, experience it firsthand with our students, um, and I also welcome any questions as well. In this packet, there are also several letters um, from community members, educators, families, and prior students advocating for Noble Class. So I hope I will also take the time to read them because they unfortunately could not be here tonight, but I felt it was important that their voice was heard. Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation. Last one is Christian Allison, our special education director, and her resignation is um, in effect for June 30th, 2024.
nationals again is a pretty good accomplishment. Uh, we had Ryan Moore, who was a race walker, who finished right kind of in the middle of the pack. So again, nationals, pretty major accomplishment. Uh, yeah, a, a, a kudos to all the coaches, the athletes, the parents that help out with all of our programs. We couldn't do it without the parents, the booster groups that we have, the parents that drive their kids to and from practices and games. Um, we have we have 60 athletic programs between the middle school and high school. We've got over 100 coaches and volunteers that volunteer their time, more time than, than, than sometimes necessary, helping kids just outside of sports with their life and, and growing young men and women uh, to go into the real world. Um, so a testament to, to everyone that helps out with our programs and thank you to our school board for supporting us and, and everything that we do. So thank you.
years. Uh, I'm here because of the Facebook post. Uh, I'm just curious if all the school board, school board members, if you approve that post. Because it seems you're singling out some of your board members. And I feel you're making a divide. Also in there was it stated majority of the community members who show up to the school board meetings who don't currently have children in MSA B60. That means families who currently have children at MSA B60 are not using their voices at the school board public input sessions. It, to me, it sounds like we're being blamed because we're showing up. I did have two, uh, two children that attended the school. Two of them, both of them were bullied. Nothing was done about it. Um, we want to know where our tax dollars are going. And I know it's, a, it's hard for parents to make to the school board meetings. They're at 7 and 7.30 at night. Some are single parents. Some have parents working during the day, some at night. So who's going to be home with the children? Uh, I have grandchildren who are going to be approaching age, school age, where they'll be attending our school district. And I want it to be a safe, fun learning experience for them. My last note is the very last line in the Facebook post. It said, we can't allow the minority to speak for the majority. I'm sorry, we are now waking up. We, are know, we, we know what's going on. We all have voices and we all have something special to offer. And it's time to recognize this instead of tearing each other down for our differences. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jessica Pearson, and I'm a borough resident with a son who's currently in fourth grade. Um, I'm here tonight to share my concerns with the proposed cuts to various programs for next year. I do not work in the Noble District, but I have been a classroom teacher for 24 years now, and I do understand that cuts are never made lightly, but I'm alarmed at the rationale discussed at the last meeting for many of them. Every day our educators are asked to meet the needs of the whole child juggling social-emotional learning, mental health challenges, behavior challenges, poverty, addiction, and on and on, all while doing their very best to educate each unique student. Cutting specialist staff and programs will make this even more challenging. Impacting classroom teachers because it only adds a few kids to each class may seem logical on paper, but a few kids can make a huge difference in the ability for teachers to be effective in meeting the wide array of needs of our learners. Cutting ed tech may seem great in theory if you look at just numbers, but when you look at what students need in their IEPs, overload, overloading ed techs just makes for an impossible situation. Proposing to combine specials between buildings seems like a creative solution, but when you look at the rich programming and total number of students those staff members have to effectively juggle, not to mention the different cultures in each building, you are encouraging high teacher burnout water down programming, and a destruction of so many of our clubs that those specialists offer to our students. My son, who absolutely adores his regular ed classroom teacher, always talks about his specials first when sharing about his day, because those programs are a vital part of a well-rounded education. Being able to participate in after-school clubs this year has helped him thrive in a way uh, very differently from what his rec sports teams offer. Every teacher who works with each student plays a role in helping our kids become well-rounded thinkers and people. They may be considered specials, but they are just as essential. At the last meeting, I heard a community member, who's also a teacher in the district, invite school committee members to visit the schools, get into the classroom, and speak with the teachers, and I would encourage you all to consider doing that. I'd also encourage both district and, bu and building admin to get back into the classrooms, not just for observations, but to actually experience what life is like daily for all of the hardworking staff and our students. Cutting educational staff and programs is not the answer our students need. Please find other solutions to the budget challenges that will not negatively impact our students. Thank you for your time. Good evening, Mark Rulard from North Warwick. First of all, I want to say um, congratulate the students that stood up. It took a lot of courage. They did a very good job. I want to thank them. I also want to thank the teachers that helped and push these students. Um, you know, we're not against the teachers. We want teachers to have more money. And I know a lot of you are teachers here this evening. And what we want to see is cut on the budget. Tonight, what, you get rid of the woke ideology and get back to the curriculum. Um, 
I hold 40 U.S. patents working on my fifth. Um, I got trademarks. I got five uh, full licenses, state licenses in the water field. Um, you know, when we talk about um, climate change, science, um, NASA just found that Titan, it's got more petroleum on Titan than the Earth does. Well, we sit there and go, how the hell is that happen? How did the dinosaurs get there? Well, they realize that oil is now is a natural resource that keeps going. We're never going to run out of it. It's part of the Earth, the way the Earth breathes like we do. Carbon is not our enemy. It is not, it's what we breathe. Why were the dinosaurs so big? Because there was so much carbon. Excuse me. Okay, I'm, I'm going with this. Yeah, have and, you yes, I am. <laughs> so tonight, if you ask most kids, what does um, uh, democracy mean? Most of them get, get it wrong. It means from the rule, rulers up, down. Republic means from the rule down up, means people have a voice. And tonight, you said that you're a Democrat. In other words, these parents don't, there's no transparency. The parents have no say. They pay for your, they pay for your education, they pay for your, uh, uh, your, uh, your pay. And um, they have to have a say. Those are their children, not yours, okay? Um, I just want to say, we don't want to take away academic activity, but there's a real problem right now. Every 90 days, we're tacking on a trillion dollars to our deficit. And before you know it's going to be every 100 days. We are on a runaway train that is going to crash soon. There's a lot of people I met that can't meet their budgets to buy food, feed their family. They have to close up the doors in their house to um, heat a one-room house so they can uh, survive. They're having a hard time paying their taxes. Um, we don't have to cut, we can cut the HVAC system. That's $8 million to cut off your budget. The resource officer in Lebanon, that's almost $200, uh, $200,000 off your budget. You know, there's ways to save in the budget without sacrificing the children. And that's something we need to look at. Thank you. Excuse me. We do have some people that haven't had a chance to speak. Is it possible with the last couple minutes that we turn that time over to them? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank, Will you. I be able thank, to finish? thank you for all your input, but we do have some other people that want to, want to speak. Okay. Can I go after them and finish? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello. My name is Daniel Hook. I am a parent of two uh, young children. I live in Berwick. Uh, my daughter is a first grader at Hudson, and my son will be starting there in the fall. Uh, when my daughter comes home from school, what she talks about is her specials. And principally, what, uh, what she talks about is STEAM and the activities that she gets to do in that class. As a professional, uh, STEAM is the class that would have been better prepared me for my job in the workforce because every day I use both art and science to communicate um, business metrics, projects, goals. So in the coming business climate, uh, I believe that STEAM is among the best uh, type of class that can prepare our kids for the future. Uh, I also believe that it's important to continue providing our children with both art and science, learning opportunities you know, in a world that continually needs you know, logical thinkers that communicate in a variety of different ways, be that art, music, uh, performance, uh, sculpture. The world continues to need those that communicate abstract and scientific thoughts and ideas in ways that are communicated, that, that communicate in more than just uh, the written word or the abstract science math equations. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Brian Fowler. I will talk to you a little bit about a couple of failures. Uh, the first one I'll start with is myself. I was a graduate of this high school. I feel like this school failed me. 
right? There was no hands-on opportunities like you guys have now for these kids, and it sounds like we're talking about cutting. I think that's a huge mistake. We have a workforce out there that does not have enough skilled labor in it, and we're talking about removing some of those opportunities for these kids to get the education that they need. Second, I think this is the laziest, sorry, this is a, a lazy failure in what we're gonna cut. We're talking about cutting some of the lowest salaries in this district. That last check, there was over 20 people making six figures in this district, and we're talking about cutting people like my wife, who makes 25% of what our top earners make in this district. These are the people who are on the front lines, who are trying to help these kids who need the extra help. And they need it. Thank you for your time. Thank you.